Hello, this is Xavier from XDTutorials.com and today we're going to be going over 3D text. Now, I know what you're thinking, there's a ton of tutorials out there on 3D text, but I'm always a little disappointed whenever I watch them because they kind of stop before getting into the fun things. So, um, and what I mean by that is that normally they'll come up and they'll show you how to make 3D text, but they won't actually show you how to influence the different sides of the 3D text and how to put patterns on them and, and things like that that so I'm gonna show you a method that uses paths um, along with some of the easy methods to create 3d text so let's close this out and I'm gonna open up an image here that I already kinda of started all I did is I created um, some text that just says Xavier and then I took that text and I put it on a um, perspective so that it's kind of looking like it's laying on the ground. So the first method that's probably the easiest method to make 3D text is you just duplicate the layer, do alpha right click and alpha to selection, grab your fill tool, grab a color, I'm going to do fill hole selection, just click inside the path here. You'll notice I'll just create a, a gray I'm going to do control shift A to select all. I'm going to click on my gray Xavier wording. Click on my move tool. I'm going to make sure that it says move the active layer. I'm just going to click once. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys and I'm just going to arrow down. Okay. Again, I'll just click on the back and now you get some very simple 3D looking text you'd have to clean up the corners to make them straight lines so it's convincing you know you'll see on the A it's a little angled here I just cut that off straight down like that and fill that in with gray and it would be a lot more convincing but you can kinda see it on the eye it looks nice Okay, so again very simple method um, it works great for text when it's in this view format probably works even better for when it's straight rather than when it's laying down on the ground. Okay. So next method that's really easy as well we go and we'll actually use this as kind of like a base for um, the tutorial today. I'm going to duplicate this Xavier layer again. Alpha to selection on the copy. I'm going to fill it in with a yellow. The only reason I'm using yellow is just because I want a bright nice color that kind of sticks out. Um, New control shift a now with this layer I want to make the layer the entire image size so I'm going to do layer layer to image size you'll see how it expands the layer I'm going to go to filters blur or motion blur and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my angle to 270 and my length I'm going to do maybe about 23 or so, 24, 25, somewhere right in there. You can play with it. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer like crazy. You're going to notice right here it's going to count all the layers. I'm going to do about, oh, 30 layers or so. And you're going to see I get this like 3D effect. If I lay my Xavier in black over it, you'll see it's a nice border uh, looks like it's 3d so very simple to do the last step we do is we merge you know make sure to un make uh, your Xavier text not visible I'm gonna go hold down control M which is gonna pop up the merge layers options and I'm just gonna hit merge so anything that was visible just got merged down onto one layer and now I have some 3D text. So this is normally where all the other tutorials stop. They just say, hey, here's your easy 3D text. Uh, we're going to continue on and actually show you now how do I change the sides of these 3D texts. Because right now, you'd almost have to hand paint it in. There's no real basis for you to make selections on, on any of these 
different sides. So to create a basis to make active selections we're going to be using paths. Just for those of you that may not have used paths before I just want to do a quick how to use the paths. Um, you're going to notice that I actually have a paths dialog tab that's open and the path tool is right here. So to create a path all we do is click once um, I'm going to create or click on this polygonal that's going to force my paths to be straight lines and not curved at all. So I'm just going to click once, click again. You'll notice that these are dots. Those dots can be moved if you click and hold and drag them. Um, the dot that isn't solid that has like this little box, that means that's the active dot or the active point um, that your next line is going to be at. So if I clicked on this point, click a line you see how the line comes off of that point now instead um, etc etc so to delete one of these points I hold down control and shift and I just click and it deletes it I can also delete lines by holding down control and shift and it's going to delete the line Okay. so that's paths um, if you hold down control and hover over one of the points it's going to close the path um, and besides that that's all you really need to know for this tutorial essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create all these paths and then we're going to stroke the path with a pencil tool and that's going to give us a line and thus give us areas that we can select um, in order to fill in the different sides of the 3d text so I'm going to just delete this path here and let's get started so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the black Xavier text. I'm going to do alpha to selection. And then I'm going to go up to my selection in my window and I'm going to go to path. What that does is it creates a path out of that selection. If I double click you see all the different points. So it automatically created a path around the text. Okay, and I can make that visible or invisible. So I'm just going to name this top path. Okay. I'm going to do the exact same thing with my yellow text. I'm going to right click, alpha to selection, select to path. I'm going to go to my path dialog. I'm going to rename this bottom path. And I'm going to move it down. Whoops, didn't catch. Bottom path and I'm going to move this down. Okay. So right now we have a path for both the top and the bottom. You kind of get this outline. I'm going to use a white layer below just to see that outline a little bit better. So the paths that we're going to actually be creating are going to be the straight lines that connect the top and the bottom together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new path and I can do that by clicking on the new path button. Looks like a piece of paper with the corner folded over and I'm gonna call that adding lines you don't have to rename it but it's helpful I'm gonna grab my path tool and I'm just gonna do one letter here um, and then I'm going to speed up the video so you're not having to watch me so let's just do the X I'm just gonna do like this okay now you're going to notice that I have a line here that's being drawn that I don't necessarily need. What I'm going to do is actually delete those lines and then we're going to merge all of our paths together down in one and then we'll be all set to go. So I'm just going to hold down control shift, delete those lines, whoops, deleted the wrong line. Just need to delete this line and this line and now I just have those three lines that I drew. So we'll speed this up so you're not having to watch me do all of these uh, and then we'll come back. Okay, so now you'll see that we have all of our straight lines that we drew in on our image here. Essentially, the paths are just like the layers. We can merge them all together so it's all one path. And then that will make us, um, or the steps, 
of stroking the path a lot more easier if they're all on one layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that all three paths are visible. I'm going to right click on one of them, it doesn't matter which one. Click on Merge Visible Paths and now I have one path. Okay. The next step that I do, and this is pretty important, is that I'm going to go to my Pencil Tool and I'm going to make the settings on the Pencil Tool exactly how I want them for uh, stroking these lines. Because stroking the path is basically going to take our Pencil Tool and draw along each one of these red lines that's showing up on my screen right now. So I'm going to make my pencil size to 1 so you'll see it's going to make it just one pixel big. I'm going to make sure that my color is black, my foreground color is black. And that everything else looks everything else looks good. So I'm going to go back to my paths dialog and I'm going to double click on the path. See as soon as I double click you'll see all the dots on the screen here. I'm going to click on um, my layers tab. I always forget to do this. Create a new layer and this is going to be my outline. Okay, I'm going to make sure that that's the active selection. Go back to my path, select it, stroke path. A dialog box is going to come up. Choose stroke path with paint tool and then change the paint tool to the pencil. I believe the default is going to be the paintbrush the first time you do it, but we want it to be pencil. We're choosing the pencil over the paintbrush because the pencil is going to give us a solid line. It's not going to give us any sort of blurry edges on our line whatsoever. So, And then all I do is I hit stroke. And if I make this path invisible and click on my move tool here, you're going to see that now I have a black outline of the word Xavier. What all this has done for us is it's giving us a way to easily just click with our fuzzy select tool and it creates an active selection so we can go through and we can shade these, make gradients, do all sorts of fun stuff with the actual sides of the 3D text. So let's start playing a little bit. I'm just going to make this uh, Xavier yellow text here so I can kinda see what's going on and you know I'm gonna select all my faces and again I'm gonna kinda speed up the video but basically all I'm doing is selecting the faces and then doing different features on them so I'm just gonna hold down shift click all of my faces here now the one thing to point out is that my selection is going up to the black line. It's not including the black line. So if you decide that, oh, you don't want a black line uh, on your text at all, you're going to want to make sure to grow these by one pixel. And you just do File, Grow, Dialog comes up, one pixel, hit OK. See, now that then includes the black line. So if you paint on it, you're going to paint over those black lines. Um, I'm actually going to keep the black lines in. I just think it's a nice border around. Okay, so let's speed up the video here and um, you'll see what I do with this. Okay, I want to point out, I got done recoloring my sides. You're going to notice as soon as I put my black text on, you're going to see some of the yellow text still. Okay, So if you make the yellow text invisible, you're going to notice that there's some white there. There's a couple different ways to correct for that. You can either go back to your coloring layer and you can color those in with black. 
or you can just blur your top layer here um, when you get the color that you want you can just blur it and that will cover up those little white spaces in between there So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to add some shadows to the bottom of my front faces here. So I'm just going to select all of them. I'm going to grab my gradient tool and I'm going to select foreground to transparent. Let's create a new layer. That wasn't the best example here. I'm going to have to do them individually. Okay, so we have some shadows down. I'm, I'm sure I'll be touching them up here in a bit as well. Uh, I'm just going to add a few new effects to the actual sides of the 3D text here. And the last thing I'm going to do to kind of spiff this up is to add some kind of shininess to some of these faces here. And I just do that by again grabbing my gradient tool, foreground is white, and then I'm going to change the shape to bilinear. So we'll stop there with that, and uh, it's not the best texture, but good for being quick on it, right? Essentially, that, that's how you go about changing, changing a 3D text, uh, putting a little bit more of your style onto the actual sides of the text. You know, if you liked the video or, or you enjoyed this technique, feel free to subscribe to my channel or like the video. All that um, definitely helps if you make something using this technique. Leave a note uh, or you know post a YouTube response um, to this to this video here and and let people know what you're what you're doing with this. I love to see all all the different things that people create. So have a wonderful day. Hope you enjoyed and uh, take care.